Hello, my name is Dominique Damien, and I'm a safety director with Washington Farm Bureau. Today, we will be talking about implement safety. This training is intended for employers. It does not substitute tractor or implement manufacturer's recommendations, rather is intended to be a supplement. We will be going quickly, so feel free to ask questions throughout. This is also being recorded, so you'll have an opportunity to revisit it as needed. Why is implement safety so important? Accidents involving Im implements take milliseconds to cause severe injury or death, yet they are completely preventable. The safe connection of a tractor to an implement requires the operator to know the equipment being connected and to understand the procedures required for a safe tractor to implement connection. The operator must have skill and respect for all personal and public safety. Before hitching to a tractor to any implement, perform a hazard assessment and create a safety plan. Ensure that the operator has sufficient knowledge and skill. What hazards exist surrounding the equipment? For this, it's important to do a walk around inspection. You'll need to understand the tractor and implement compatibility. Tractor power and implement power requirements. Is it a drawbar or a three point hitch? It's the PTO category. Is, are there hydraulic and electronic requirements? Is the equipment safe to operate? Then conduct a risk asset estimation. What are the potential risks to the operator, the bystanders, any public, the equipment, or any property? And then evaluate the risk. What, what is the severity associated with the risk? Is it death, injury, damage? What's the cost of it? and then develop a safety plan based on your findings. Employees should conduct a walk around inspection prior to operating the equipment each time. They should evaluate the surrounding environment, assess the ground conditions, the slope, moisture, sto soil stability, and the proximity of obstacles like ditches, buildings, other equipment, or power lines. Check the tractor and implement to ensure that they are safe to operate. Check to ensure that all guards are in place, the condition of the tires are good, there aren't any fuel, late, fuel leaks, and test the brake and steering functions. Ensure that your employees assess the compatibility of the equipment, such as the power and hitch type, the condition of the pins, and the safety chain. And then make sure that they check for bystanders and make sure the area is clear of them. The drawbar hitch uses a single attachment point. They can either be fixed or adjustable. If the tractor is in the large category, only operate it at a suitable power for the implement. If the implement is in the large category, ensure the tractor is large enough to safely handle it. Use the largest pin diameter that will fit through the tractor draw bar and implement hitch. Ensure that the pin will not slip through the larger clevis hole. Heavy duty washers may be required for this. Use pins supplied by the dealer or reputable farm part suppliers. Low cost hitch pins from sources may be from some sources may be inferior. And then ensure that the pin is securely locked in place. The clevis to tongue connection provides the safest and most stable loading of the drawbar pin while allowing the required vertical angular capabilities and rotational capabilities. Newer tractors are general, generally equipped with a clevis on the drawbar. Clevis to clevis connections are unsafe as they can limit angular movement and put extremely high loads on the pin and other components, which can lead to mechanical failure. To remedy, it, to remedy this, convert one of the clevises to a tongue for a safe connection. Additionally, tongue to tongue connections are also unsafe as they can easily result in an accident accidental detachment of the implement. The tendency for a quick fix, such as a bolt or pin, is an unsafe practice, even if a retainer is used. It is recommended that the tractor have a clevis installed to achieve a safe connection. Is on tractors provide a connection that links the implement to the tractor and keeps the implement supported and in line with the tractor at all times. The two lower links are the two arms that connect to the two lower attachment points on the implement. On many tractors, the lower link can be set to different modes of operation. There's the depth slash 
position control, where the draft links are positioned and remain at the height set on the control lever. You, this is the setting you want to use when you're hitching. There's a float control where the draft links are raised and lowered by the attachment implement as it follows the contours of the ground with any interaction from the head, without any interaction from the hydraulic system. You don't use this while you're hitching. And then there's the draft load control, the three point hitch is, where the three point hitch is responsive to changes in the amount of draft load produced by the implement, automatically raising and lowering the height of the draft links to keep the draft on this tractor relatively constant. Again, don't use this while you're hitching. The upper link provides the third connection point for the three-point hitch to maintain a stable tractor to implement connection. This usually has a screw adjustment to shorten and lengthen the link, which can be adjusted by hand. Sway chains, sway blocks, or sliding fixed members restrict the movement of the draft links to prevent interference from, uh, with other tractor components, such as like tires. Three-point hitch configurations are based on tractor PTO power ranges and are identified as one of five different categories. Each higher category has a larger link arm, larger diameter hitch pin, and a wider lower arm spacing, increased operating range, and a higher lift capacity. Many implements use power takeoff or PTO drive lines to power it. These can be incredibly hazardous. It takes a fraction of a second for an employee to recognize they've made a mistake around a PTO shaft. That is why it's necessary for them to always check the guards in place prior to operation. If the guards are damaged or missing, do not allow employees to continue until they're replaced. The power takeoff or PTO guard, guard is guarded by the master shield on top of the tractor. It may be hinged to allow easier connection of the implement, but it must be lowered uh, prior to operating it. The PTO stub shaft guards the enclosed stub shaft uh, when the PTO is not in use, and then the bell guard guards the bell of the PTO, and the shaft guard guards the length of the shaft. Ensure the implement and tractor are compatible to prevent shaft failure. PTO driven implements operate at either 540 RPM or 1000 RPM. An implement configured with a 540 RPM drive line should not be connected to a 1000 RPM tractor or vice versa. Here are the typical drawbar lengths. Refer to the implement operator's manual for the correct drawbar length for your specific implement. Never allow damaged drive lines or components to be used. Replace them only with appro approved parts. The implement drive line should be correctly aligned or in phase to prevent excessive vibration and the strain on the drive line components. The correct alignment requires the end yokes of the U-joints to be positioned in the same plane. Then, ma then make sure there are uh, make sure there are manufacturer recommended shear pins readily available in case one fails. Slip clutch clutches and other overloaded devices should be checked for correct operation. To install the PTO shaft, support the weight of the implement drive line by cradling it in your hands around the shaft guard. Do not lift the implement drive line by the end bell guard because it may damage the guard. Align the implement drive line U joint splines with the tractor PTO shaft splines. If the splines will not align, try turning the PTO stub shaft for the implement drive line slightly. Slide the implement drive line U joint onto the tractor PTO stub shaft until the implement drive line locking mechanism is engaged. Self locking collars or push pin. Uh, locks may have to be disengaged first to allow the implement drive line to slide onto the stub shaft. Ensure the PTO is locked in place prior to engaging or transporting the implement. Verify the implement drive line has lock, been locked out or ha, has locked on the stub shaft by pulling back and forth on the implement drive line, and then replace the master shield. Ensure the tractor wheels do not come in contact with the implement drive line and ensure that there isn't de any debris on the shaft. If the drive line is not in use during transportation, it must be securely stored. One person drawbar hitching systems have developed over the years to make one person hitching much more convenient. These systems allow the primary mechanical connection to occur with the operator on the tractor so that only one trip is required to complete 
the engagement of the safety locks and non-mechanical connections. For three-point hitches, one can use a quick hitch coupler like this. These stabilize the three hitching points on the tractor to meet the points on the implement with one action. The operator simply backs up to the implement so that the hooks on the quick hitch align with the implement that locks them in place. Many implements now have hitch jacks that help set the vertical position of the hitch. If your implements don't have one, you can contact your dealer to install one. The selection will depend on the hitch load rating. Recent standards specify that hitch jacks must be able to withstand a side load of 50% of the vertical load. Hitch jacks are, all, are not typically designed to take on the full force of a loaded wagon, so wagons should be emptied before unhitching. And then ensure that employees who hitch alone follow this checklist. Establish a callback person with someone. If the operator has not made contact by the predetermined time, the second person will then initiate the measures to check in on their safety. Back up the implement at the slowest speed possible. When, we, when within one foot, stop and make sure that you engage the brake. When you return to the back tractor after making adjustments to the, the implement hitch, disengage the parking brake, make the steering correction based on the estimated side to side offset and then slowly back up to the estimated distance. Some three point hitch tractors have telescoping draft links that can facilitate positioning from a distance. Once those draft links are attached, align the, align the top link hole with the top pins. This may be done by turning the threaded adjustment on the top link. After the draw bar and implement hitch holes are aligned, insert the pins and install the pin positioning lock. If there is more than one person hitching, ensure that they have coordinated hand signals and maintain visual contact. The helper should remain safely outside the path of the tractor until the tractor is stopped. The operator should back up the implement at the slowest speed possible and stop the tractor and set the brake to signal to the helper and signal to the helper that it's safe to do the inspection of the alignment. The helper can raise or lower the implement, then step out of the path of the tractor and signal back to the operator that it's safe to continue backwards. The operator then can disengage the brake and adjust steering according to the helper's instructions. Once the implement hitch aligns with the tractor, the operator must stop and engage the brake again. The helper can then insert the hitch pin and positioning lock. For three-point hitches, the helper will secure the lower draft links and then the top link. A safety chain is required as a safety backup for tractor to implement connections. The safety chain maintains connection between the implement and tractor should the primary connection fail during transport. The minimum strength rate it should be equal to the gross weight of the implement being towed, and the rating of the safety chains is, should be marked up with a metal tag and should not be attached from the chain. Attach the safety chain to a secure location on the hitch and the tractor, as shown. Never attach the chain to an intermediate support. If the distance from the drawbar pin, either the front or rear chain attachment point, exceeds the values below or here, intermediate it, Intermediate chain support is required. So for chains rated for 30,000 pounds or less, the distance can exceed nine inches. And for 40,000 pounds or less, it can exceed 11 inches. The slack in the chain should only be enough necessary for articulation. Ensure that the safety chain has not been damaged. Chains that are not in use should be properly stored. Accidental implement disconnection on a public road could result in death or serious injury and, and property damage. Never tow an implement on a public road without a hitch pin retainer and properly sized safety chain. Hydraulic power has become very popular to provide various implement operations power for various func functions, such as raising and lowering implement, providing, uh, providing rotational power, or engaging mechanisms. Hydraulic oil under pressure can also pose a serious hazard uh, risk if not handled properly. It can penetrate the skin and cause eye damage. If a leak is identified, ensure employees relieve pressure and ensure the engine is turned off. Ensure employees know that even when the implement is disconnected, the hydraulic lines may still be under pressure. The pressure should not be relieved by impacting the, the tip of the mail coupler. Wear hand and eye protection. Examine the hose to identify any breaks or cracks and then repair or replace the lines according to the manufacturer. 
Before applying pressure to a system, ensure all hoses fittings are, and fittings are not damaged and all the connections are tight. For many years, hydraulic connectors have been standardized to, so that all uh, hydraulic implement lines can be coupled to all hydraulic outlets track on the tractor. And then before connecting, make sure you clean the male and female portions of the fittings. Do not operate the tractor hydraulic controls until the circuits have been completely connected. Although most tractor hydraulics will allow implement fittings to be connected under pressure, leaving an implement with pressure in the hose is very dangerous. Temperature change can expand the oil and increase the system pressure. Once connected, test the equipment to ensure that components move as expected and then properly maintain the equipment according to the manufacturer's recommendations. During transportation, engage the transport safety locks to ensure the hydraulic components cannot accidentally move or be activated. After the implement is properly connected, slowly raise and lower the implement to check for any in interference between the tractor and the implement. Prior to beginning, it, beginning any field operations, the following should also be checked. The implement leveling, implement rate of drop control, implement side sway adjustment, upper center link adjustments for proper draft, draft control and uh, sensing if it is equipped with it. And then always lower the implement to the ground, shut off the engine and remove the key whenever temporarily leaving the tractor. When disconnecting and storing the implements, consider the ground condition again for the storage location. Choose a firm, level, and well-drained area for storing the implement to pre prevent it from rolling over, sinking, or disconnecting from the tractor. Lower the hitch jack if equipped with one, or block the hitch. Uh, block the wheels to prevent it from rolling or engage the brake. Attaching to a single point load to any location other than the drawbar or the top link of the three point hitch can cause rollovers, which can lead to serious injury or death. Attaching an implement changes the center of gravity on the tractor. Improper hitching, overloading, and quick motions may cause rollovers. Never attach an implement to the three point hitch unless it is actually designed for it. The mass of the implement carried behind the tractor shifts the tractor center of gravity and can change the handling capabilities and stability. Operators should avoid traversing steep slopes or climbing embankments when heavy implements are being carried. So to summarize, we're just gonna go over a few of the things we've talked about. First of all, only attach compatible equipment to the tractor. So make sure the power and the hitch types align. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations by looking through the operator's manual. Do a risk assessment and come up with a safety plan. Instruct employees to never step over PTOs, whether they're rotating or not. Never wear loose clothing, drawstrings, or loose hair near a PTO. Properly maintain the equipment and then transport and store the equipment properly. I know we went fast, here is our contact information if you have additional questions. Um, again, my name is Dominique Damien. I'm out of the Lacey area. Jeff Lutz is out of Kennewick and Luis Isiordia is out of Sunnyside. Please feel free to reach out um, or this is recorded so you can revisit it at any point. Thank you and have a good day.